Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So unfortunately this week, did pretty poorly on defense, and goofed one match at the beginning of the season. Ether Raids because of a mistap, which kind of just made everything go downhill real quick, so feels bad man. Minus, other, other than that, we had a perfect offense. But not a perfect offense, and when you do the no ladder shenanigans, well, yeah, it hurts, but that's how it goes. And minus 160 on defense is never a good result, but I decided to change up the map because why not? <laughs> just just for shizzles and giggles. To be honest, switching um, the placement of the Celeph and Sothus is probably better marginally. But then it just lets hit and run go ham again because this is literally just more of like a mirrored thingamajig. But pull smoke on Itsuki just gonna be perfectly fine here. Unfortunately, Krom gets doubled because he's not fast enough. Of course, we are. This was back before Krom actually had attack speed push. Four, but I mean it doesn't matter too much. He d he did a decent job for what he for what he's supposed to do, but uh, yeah, that's the problem with Krom when he's too slow. Then of course he would have done much more damage. He also would have had more attack, so things would have definitely gone a bit better. I don't know if it necessarily was completely better, but uh, definitely better than the outcome of this match. <laughs> And again, um, it's he just living by just enough HP. So pretty straightforward, nothing too special. You kind of know just going into the season because of auto dispatch. A lot more people are just not playing Ether Raids. So when you do get matched up with someone, it's like a rematch or some or it's a more competent player who's actually trying to climb, but you know, there's still a small chunk of folks who are just trying to stay in tier 21 plus and are just still playing because maybe they find it fun or something. I didn't have any real difficult matches this week other than the uh, mistap match where it became a difficult match because I mistapped but uh, unfortunate That's how it goes. Uh, it was a pretty threatening team in general though. It was a young Sheeta, Ophelia, Duo Makaya, but then there were like two corner units so it was definitely exploitable for sure and the plan was to exploit it but uh, didn't happen. So they go for the classic hit and run and of course this Setup's even worse at uh, punishing hit and run, so 10 out of 10. But yeah, with this new setup, a lot of people like putting Bolt Tower on column 4, so um, <laughs> it's not very good for Celeth. Kind of why I feel like putting switching places with Sothis is probably better. Unfortunately for them here, they get memed on by not approaching and just trying to keep running. So they just end up probably just laddering out there. And here we have the classic end turn shenanigans. Um, this is a funny match coming up in a bit with end turn shenanigans. But yeah, pretty much at this point is where Krom does have attack speed push. And at some point I do get Sylvia to plus 10. There's also guard here, which is a very good tech. And of course, Krom somehow lives by one because, sure, <laughs> I, I don't know why that's a thing, but um, not ideal. Would have preferred for Celeph to get danced, but whatever. They're gonna just pretty much just keep hitting end turn because the team doesn't really have any damage output. So, of course, they have the ruse as well for the guard and debuff in general. So, seems solid. But like even so, you can see like Sonya still does a decent amount of breakback. I feel like 
I could actually make a Dark Season team actually be able to deal with some Brave Bikes. Not all of them, because some of them go like the Turbo Bikes with Peony stacking and Speed stacking with like Spurring or whatever. So that's always definitely a thing. But like the, the, the standard generic distant counter, null C disrupt, or whatever people use on Brave Bike, I feel like I could make a team that could do it, that could handle. Here, kind of funnily, um, all their units are low on HP, and then they do this, but like, Sylvia doesn't have any attack, so this two damage. <laughs> Feels bad. Uh, but, I mean, of course they did, they could have just ran because they have healing tower and stuff, so they could have just healed up anyways. Not like it matters there. But, uh, here comes the troll match. This is about as troll as things get, and why you have to, um, play accordingly. So you have, you know, Repel Bike, Phantom Speed, Pull Smoke, very standard stuff. I don't know why they brought a Versa, maybe it's just their preset team. First thing to do is activate the Bolt Trap. It's fair. I mean, I probably would have activated the Bolt Trap with a Versa, because it's not like she's actually going to be doing much. The minus three to all stats, sure, I guess, but if you're dying because you didn't debuff by three to all stats, I think you have a smaller problem at hand. <laughs> um, so as you'll see, the problem is Brave Vike doesn't kill. And this is a very common theme with Brave Vike, which is something I was thinking about exploiting for the fun of it, but decided, nah, we're, we're not going to do that. So they're just going to keep hitting end turn, which is, you know, Brave Vike's not going to die, so why not? But he never kills Selif here. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, we can't double because Brave Lucina is here with double drive speed. So, so this is a bit short from doubling, but I mean, what are we going to do about it? It's an unmerged Sothis, not like we expect much. So they're just going to keep hitting end turn, you know? It, it, it's totally fine because they're not going to die, but that's the problem. They don't kill. And if you don't kill, you're timing yourself out. You still have to deal with all the units. And, uh, Selof is still kicking. And so now, at this point, they go for the greed play. They put Legendary, Lu or they put Brave Lucina there. I think we all know what's coming next. <laughs> of course, Selof doesn't die again, but now he finally dies. But at what cost? Chrome Dome trolling. <laughs> Feels bad. And we get basically an exact one shot. About as troll as it gets. Uh, I mean, feels bad. Too greedy. Um, very close margin. Of course, this is with attack speed push for it. And I think at this point, yeah. Sylvia is plus 10. Decides to just stick with plus HP because why not? Might as well go all in, especially when people are doing things like using Bright if you arm still. There's another interesting match later where, uh, yeah, th that gives me a reason to like not even bother trying to build a good dark defense without dumping a lot of resources in to tech against stuff. Because I feel like if I'm going to make any sort of defense, it's just going to be a generic thing that can lose to isolation, or hit and run, or something. There's always something that's going to go wrong. And I'd prefer to concede to Gil first. That's, that's like the only kind of team I'm just willing to concede, because I cannot be bothered to try and tech against Gil Force at the cost of losing to like every other strat. <laughs> uh, no sir. And of course, Sela, in his location, is, is he's always in range of the prime bolt tower locations, so it's just a bad setup in general. Super susceptible to all this stuff. And funny enough, somehow, if we trolled hard enough, Ophelia could have actually just missed that kill on Sela. That's when you know things are bad. 
But maybe in later this August, if the uh, if the August uh, upcoming August legendary banner is bad on blue, because I'm trying to get legendary Julia to plus ten. I believe I can get up to her up to plus six at most right now. Ideally, I would like to. Um, I, ideally, I would like to plus tenor, but if the, the third blue focus is hot garbage, I'm not doing it. But we're, we're not going to risk getting absolutely memed on. Hero Fest was already troll enough, so this, they just end up tying themselves out here. But here comes the slew of rematches. Some cool, some cool teams here that are coming up. But yeah, if not on Carlos this upcoming uh, August Legendary Banner. Um, yeah, this is a Gale Force team, so pretty cool. Double Disarm Trap Fury 4 Airs, so this person's definitely serious about that. To be honest, Double Peony's likely better, but this, this totally works too. But uh... Yeah, on Carlos on the upcoming legendary banner, there's going to be a Milla and the meme himself, Bramamond. So maybe I could kick out a Sothis for Bramamond, get some more attack, and maybe 1% more offensive presence because I still do have infantry pulse. I could just meme and give him like. Even though I would lose even harder to Gil Force, I don't care. I would, I would do something like. Give him Astra or something with two cooldown hardy bearing <laughs> to troll. Unfortunately for them here, they I don't know if they calc this out. If they did props, they actually got the exact one round, two round KO on Krom thanks to flashing Blade 4 and just having enough attack. Of course, she wasn't fully max merged or anything, so it's not like it was actually close in that respect. But again, the same deal here. Valeria not fully maxed out so the fact she's living by three here they calc it out again props otherwise maybe we could have had a chance for a kill there but i mean they're just going to meme and uh surround the sonia because that's that's the problem with putting them in the corner is that they're in the corner <laughs> if that wasn't obvious enough they're just going to meme break structures pretty standard stuff but um I'm thinking I'm gonna just kind of stick with this kind of defense setup. This map's okay. Uh, I just don't want to switch to like the other desert map or whatever because then we end up having the issue of giving the enemy the defense tile and stuff and we're not gonna be able to handle that kind of those kind of shenanigans. Maybe I could try lunge Selif. I don't know. Lunge Selif seems kind of funky. Because ideally, if I really wanted to troll someone who's running a support plus carry, then I could run something silly like Repel to knock back the carry unit and activate Wings of Mercy somehow to snipe the support unit. <laughs> it would be so stupid. First of all, using Repel means you're reducing the amount of damage you take, so it just wouldn't make sense. There's like no reason to do it. They're just gonna hit end turn with uh, Shannon here. Seems pretty standard. It's not like my team's actually gonna do anything here. They have, uh, whatchamacallit, Milla for the isolation, and it's not like I'm gonna get Sylvia to ever creep enough defense on a reasonable day. So they're going to take out Krom there with a special and uh, call it a day pretty much because it's not like the rest of my team has any damage output and because they're properly using Milla to continue inflicting isolation there's no dance so there's no threat pretty much they can just casually leave and of course they have close call there to just casually leave for them and it's very straightforward from here uh, they can definitely just pick up everything now Call it a day. And of course they already knew that bolt trap was fake, so that was a totally perfectly fine play. 
So, more rematches, more shenanigans. <laughs> Here, this is, this is an interesting team. I mean, you might look at it and think you know what's gonna happen, and then, uh, nope. <laughs> It turns out, you know, this is just a prime example of why hit and run can be very powerful on offense. It's definitely something to not scoff at because it is, like, even though I use a primary vantage strategy, it's honestly more of a hit and run strategy <laughs> that uses vantage as a meme tech. He's like, sure, they, they just, all they really did there was attack to initiate the AI. And so they have this state now, but it's perfectly fine because they have Bolt Tower. So very well timed here. And of course, in the prime Bolt Tower locations, column three or column four. As you'll know, I have mine in column three and it literally carries matches, no kappa. Yep. And of course, because we have Healing Tower, there is never any Wings of Mercy memes happening. And even if there were, there's like Miracle on Camilla. Of course, maybe you could have sniped air on a good day, but unfortunately, no, that's not how it works because of how my team's set up. So they can just literally just coast hit and run. And Kronia can just do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Except maybe taking debuffs from like shrines. So yeah, pretty much in a very common example of what you can do here. And of course, Air can 1v1 soak this any day of the week, but they can just use Camilla because, well, they still got to grab the ether structures, so might as well be a little more efficient about it. And at least, you know, Kronia's going to totally just grab the ether structure. <laughs> Literally all she does besides creeping debuffs, I guess. But Sudden Panic here did kind of help me out to a su some degree. I kind of like it. Of course, Wings of Mercy is probably marginally better, but... Uh... And here we have the ultimate troll. Like, as if you as if you needed more than one isolation. Of course, they're running Triple Mythic here, which is why you wouldn't run two Naga or two Millas even if you had one. But, uh, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> To be honest though, yeah, but yeah, like plus HP on Sylvia helps me juke these kind of Bride Fjorms, even though there's triple mythics, so yeah, they're just gonna basically hit and turn because this, um, let me, this uh, Loki is just tanky, so, you know, spend through bow, you got bracing stance to slow down cooldown acceleration, you have mystic boost with noon time. Which, if you're fast enough, which is why they're running Goad Flyers and Chill Speed, means you proc Noontime and the drawback of Spendthrift Bow really doesn't come into play. So you just stay just stay healthy and try to take not, uh, not a lot of damage from melee units. Which is also helpful because you don't accidentally, like, one turn a team and can't pick up the Ether Structures. But, uh, yeah. Very standard, as you'll see, they're just... Because they have the double isolation, <laughs> nothing can really happen here. And, like, of course, this is more of an extreme scenario. But in general, I feel like I wouldn't want to bother trying to um, tech against this stuff. Or, like, try to build an actually competent dark defense. Because stuff like isolation being more readily available during uh, light season is very devastating. But uh, I'll be back in a second here. Let me just pause the replay real quick. All right, just had to had more runny nose shenanigans. Allergies be murdering me. But like here, Sonya does a decent amount of damage, but of course it's never enough. You need a massive attack and massive special damage to one shot stuff like this. So it's never gonna end well for us here. So yeah, pretty pretty cool. I have not seen a flyer carry like this in a long time. I know earlier in the days of AR it was definitely more popular, but like stuff like this just works because if you can hit close to 60 bulk by yourself, 
with buffs, you can definitely tank a lot of stuff. I don't know about tanking a billion specials at once, but I mean, you know, a spend thrift and whatnot, I think it, it would be okay. It's not perfect, of course, because if you get spammed with specials, your main source of healing are Mystic Boost and Noontime, which both of them don't entirely heal that much, but the whole idea is you're not supposed to take a lot of damage back to back to back. So, yeah. So it looks like we might get top 6k here, don't really care. Unfortunately, 10 lift short of tier 27, but again, don't really care. <laughs> we just fool around for the memes, and here's our one try resonant battle score, taking us up to interval 18, so that's cool. And as we saw, the arena run, uh, we should be fine. Very weird score compression. <laughs> because the score is so low than what it's previously been. Like just a few seasons ago, we were way up there and looks like we might even be able to get top 50 here. Kind of because no one's really trying. It, it's too difficult. Like not even a 764 exists because this 5,362 is all 762s with uh, the plus 28 blessings. So of course there might have been like a 764 and a 760, but I kind of think it's just all 762s. And so we're not even in the leaderboards, but we're, we're, we're in here. It's just that they can't show all of them all. There's so many people have the same score, probably. But uh, yep, Legion's Battle's coming back next week, and I think it's still water season, so we'll do fun there. So we'll be back when... Uh, Probably when the results drop in, because I don't expect any more matches at this point. And it reward should be out at this point, so we do get top 6k still. But it's just kind of eh. Tier 26, and yep, next season this will be an interesting week. It is fire season, so I'm trying something new. Using actually using Mirabilis for once <laughs> so I have her so I might as well uh, Well, we'll see she buffs to res. So I don't feel like it's gonna do much. I guess it gives Elowood more res for Glacies <laughs> That's less attack uh, of course, so I think that'll come into play, but the whole meme is of course Osteus Pulse with Infantry Pulse giving Krom a slightly faster Luna <laughs> and two cooldown Draconic RF for Duma so against like a ranged unit without guard he can proc in one round. Eloa it doesn't really matter and Mirabilis in some universe proccing Ice Brigade and actually doing something but <laughs> I, I don't expect much there. So we'll see how that goes. That'll be interesting. It'll probably just get face planted, but it is a funny defense, I gotta say. It, it's a troll more than anything. So on Resonant Battles, looks like they did end up finally fixing that stuff. So we're making up to Interval 18, slowly trying to get closer to, I believe Interval 21 is the top, or is it 20? I forget. But uh, Arena is super chill this week for us. Didn't have to try too hard to stay in. And it's still water season, so we can definitely still stay in. Of course, maybe not necessarily with Anna, but uh, we can definitely do it if we just build a unit like Matilda. So there's that. And of course, <laughs> just barely made, made it. I'll go ahead and screenshot this might as well. So yeah, we barely, just barely make top 50 this week. Water Wind is the best week if you want to go for top 50 shenanigans in general. Um, the other seasons I'm not entirely, that are with Wind Season, I'm not familiar with because I, I kind of don't have anything other than a decent water core. <laughs> so feels bad. But uh, yeah, Mjolnir Strike's coming up again. Um, not looking to be a great rotation again because we're gonna drop out of tier 21 then go easily get back up to tier 21 then get kicked out during light season so we're kind of in a bad bad um, I guess rhythm at this point but it's kind of whatever so 
And we have Tempest Trials going on. All the shenanigans. Uh, that, yep, so I think that's it. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!